on this episode of the Angle of Attack show. Beach landings, bears, barf bags, and buddies. My home, Alaska, is also home to some of the last true aviators. My mission? Grow as an aviator through flying with my neighbors and friends in the backcountry and beyond. At times, I'll strike out on my own, even outside the 49th state, seeking new experiences, growing skills, staying sharp, and practicing safety. Jump aboard and ride along in this, another chapter of my aviation story. Another balmy Alaskan Tuesday, waiting at the airport for Patrick Carter. Patrick is a former Cessna test pilot. Now he flies for K2 Aviation out of Talkeetna doing amazing glacier tours. Today's mission, the bears, grizzly bears that is, just west of Homer across the Cook Inlet. The grizzly bear habitat is rich, nestled in the foothills of volcanoes and along beautiful lush green coastline. With no real airports in the area, landing would be a major challenge and perhaps impractical. I want to be real careful not to get in soft sand. Yeah. Um, Fur on its nose, that would be bad. All right, so fast forward a little bit. You mean sand like this? All right, more about that later. Back to what we were doing. I landed there on actually floats. But then there was a guy with the same tires you have okay. that landed on the beach. That's one of the places that um, Chris told me is probably doable. Mm -hmm. And then he said not to land here. Okay. Yeah, um, we weren't. We were actually in the bay when we yeah, landed in here. What? How do you say it? Ch Chinitna. Chinitna. Yeah. And then work our way north and then cut back. Yeah, be cool. With some more pre-flight planning out of the way it was time to head to the airport. Now, the Cessna 185 that we'd be flying is a very capable machine of many different things, although we could have used some bigger tires for this trip. Soon it will be on floats, but regardless, it's in good shape and Patrick takes really great care of it and he's been adding some mods over time. Also, if we could get in to see these bears, filming the trip across the inlet was of course paramount, which meant we needed to get the aircraft set up for cameras. Patrick founded a company called N Flight Cam, which specializes in accessories for GoPros and iPhones specific to aviation. So you've seen that nasty prop footage, it's really hard to get rid of. It's hard to understand what it even is, but N Flight Cam actually does get rid of that. Needless to say, Patrick knows a thing or two from over the years about getting us hooked up and rolling for footage, which was really important for this trip. By the way, this is my wife, Chelsea. She's a joy to have around. An adventurous soul, she wanted to see the bears as well, and she'd act as camera woman for part of the trip and just always adds a lot of great humor. Soon enough, we were rolling our wheels and lifting off out of Homer, my home and angle of attack HQ. Now, Homer alone offers plenty to enjoy from the air, but we had a different mission today, so we were pointing westerly. We were on our way across the Cook Inlet. Now, the Cook Inlet is a fairly wide swath of ocean water leading from the Pacific Ocean from the south up to the north to Anchorage. So crossing a body of water, especially in a wheeled airplane, takes a good deal of precaution. So prior to our flight, Patrick and I coordinated to make sure that we had the life vests available and a life raft, just in case we had to put down on water in case of an emergency. We'll get to them quickly if we need them. Okay. We'll have her hand them up. So where okay. are the life jackets? They're right behind. Chelsea. Okay. I told my dad I was going to borrow a life jacket. He's like, uh, if Charlie, you crash, there, like if you crash with a bay, a life jacket isn't going to do much. <laughs> Survivability isn't great because of the frigid water temperatures, even in the summer months. So in this quick time lapse, we were over open water for roughly 13 minutes. So this is over the cook inlet. In the middle there, you're outside gliding distance. So it's, it's uh, definitely a situation you have to be on top of. Now safely across the Cook Inlet, there was a chance we were going to be able to get out at Fossil Point and look for some rare fossils, but first we had to check the beach conditions and see if we could do it. I think there might be a public use cabin down there. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, there are a lot of tire marks on that beach. Okay. That's, yeah, that's got to be bush wheels. That's pretty rough. 
Back there, there weren't as many boulders. What about right in here? Not a lot Those of are just such a there. private cabin. There are some big boulders in there, though. Yeah, back there where I saw the tire marks, there wasn't a lot. Okay. So this is where the fossils are supposed to be, just like coming right out of the... Wow. I haven't really flown around with Chelsea like this yet. Doing no. okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just like this close. But I've never flown like this. Yeah, uh -huh. it's pretty awesome. I'm pretty careful right now just because I am not super experienced around here. I need more time experiencing the winds and what they do yeah. around all those little features. So I've just been really careful what I do. The canyons I get myself into. Landing just wasn't looking practical in this area because the aircraft tires just weren't big enough so Patrick wasn't feeling comfortable with the situation. So it's better to not go in there, not take the risk, than to regret setting down in an area where we just weren't capable. So maybe we'll come back to this area again someday. Maybe we'll be able to land there, look for those fossils. But for now, we just decided to start scooting down the coastline, heading south, making our way down to Chinitna Bay. You could use some air, that helps out. I could climb up to and get rid of some bumps. The winds were becoming an increasing concern, not only for our ability to land, but it was also making Chelsea uncomfortable and sick in the back. Throw a lap. You okay? Sorry. <laughs> Anybody want some smoothie? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one just in case. Did you get a couple already? I right, just have one. Okay. Are you feeling okay or? Yeah, she's doing it again. She's just not very used to airplanes. Yeah, and it's a bumpy day. Yeah, it's a pretty bumpy day. Usually feel better after I throw up though. I'm always amazed by just how positive Chelsea is, even in a moment of discomfort. And also, this is a reminder to keep six sacks in the back of the airplane for your passengers, no matter how experienced they may be. So we continued to push our way into Chinitna Bay with the hope that the wind situation would improve, but with how much it was kicking us around, it was making it impractical that we'd be able to land, but we could still hope while we enjoyed all the scenery around us. I'm just not real wild about landing with all this wind, it's kind of my... No, it's all good, like, whatever. Just no pressure at all. We can get back in a protected cove, but out here it's ripping like 20 knots or more. Yeah, the water will give us pretty good indication too. That's what I'm looking at, yeah. Yeah. We're not quite there yet, it's still up around the corner quite a bit. Okay. Like, see where that second peninsula is yeah. pointing out on the right? That's where it is. Okay, cool. So it's pretty far back in there, but still, there could be stuff crashing out of the canyons. There was really no risk in continuing into the bay to see if things could improve, so we kept pressing on. And if you need to discontinue and not even go back there, that's cool. No, too. I'm fine. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with flying. There are a couple bears right there, I think. See the brown spots? Wow. wow, look at that, wow. Pretty water. Man, the color of that water. So that meadow just ahead of us is where I went. And I think that's the beach they were landing on right there. It looks completely landable. And I'll go, I just, man, it's rough. It's yeah, gonna get rougher down low too. Yep. Especially with that hill there. Oh, we're fine up here then. No worries at all. We'll see if we can see a couple from the air. With the bear habitat now just around the corner, Patrick would descend and check out the conditions down lower near our landing location. Now without airport personnel, to maintain this airport, and this is not an airport, you have the tide coming in and out and the conditions are constantly changing, whereas the day before they may have been good for landing and now it may be different. So we just have to be very cautious about the conditions on the ground. 
It was no sooner that we reached our path along the beach to check out the conditions that we got really excited because we could see bears from the air. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Wow. Oh, that's cool. So where was it? You landed? This what beach the down here, this entire beach, like they're straight ahead of us too. Is beach. that Bear Mountain Lodge there? Or what uh, yeah, it? it is. Okay. Yeah, I told you they're like ants. There's about two or three of them straight ahead of us. In the water, huh? Yep, a couple of cubs. There's Look at that. There's one running way over there on the left. Are we landing? No. I'm just. Okay. Just checking it out. He's I think we can if you want. No, whatever. I'd like to if it feels nice. It feels okay. Let me just kind of cruise along. And With more awareness now and an education on the actual beach conditions. Patrick would come around again, this time with the intent to land. Now we saw some tracks on the left side of the beach or the inside of the beach, which told us that maybe some other airplanes were actually landing there. Cute! Oh my gosh, they're so cute! All right, you see that? That is a sow and her cubs, probably the coolest and most distracting thing you've ever seen on short final. Good undulations in it. Now Patrick does a very wise thing here. He gets nice and slow in ground effect, and he's looking for the exact location where he wants to start putting down the wheels. It really needs to be the perfect spot. So you can see here, now he's touched down, and he's gonna manage the direction of this because this is a tailwheel airplane, and we could really do a, a ground loop here, so he has to be careful not to get stuck in the sand. Soft. Yeah, get to your right if you can. Or just leave it alone. It's clear now that the sand is softer than anticipated, so we had no other choice but to get out, check it out, and potentially dig out. You want us to get out? Yeah, we'll have to get out. <laughs> well, do you want us to get out and then try to power yeah. it out? Yeah, I'm gonna shut it down. Okay. I want to get shut down and kind of assess. Okay. It's no big deal. Thankfully enough, I bench press reindeer hot dogs and cans of Coke, so I was well prepped and ready to help Patrick dig out of this mess and get the airplane down the beach to some more solid ground where we could then come up with a plan. So the lesson here is just because you see some tracks, it doesn't mean that they are airplane tracks. The crazy thing is we found out that there were actual vehicles in this very remote area driving back and forth from the lodge that was by the bears to some villages that were nearby, which we really didn't even consider in our planning of landing on the beach. But eventually we were able to get out and Patrick on his own was able to get down to a different area. So now loaded for bear, quite literally with bear spray and a shotgun, we made our way down the trail. So having been here before, I wasn't too worried, although Chelsea was pretty worried. These bears are pretty used to seeing humans. Many people come here each day, actually. So still, one must remain very cautious and vigilant while having a continued conversation, making a little noise so that you don't surprise the bears. The worst thing you could do is surprise a bear. So it's good to have a conversation so that they can anticipate you coming. The trail had an official sign offering more information on the bears. And after a quick read, we continued down the trail to the eastern viewing area. And coming out of the meadow in this picturesque area, we see bears everywhere. Powerful and persistent predators, the name bear, and certainly the sight of bears, as you're seeing here, usually makes people shake in their boots. However, I had this immense sense of calm and peace, and I would even say joy in seeing these animals living in their element, you know, as lone warriors, as a sow and her cubs, as a family, as siblings. You see these bears surrounding you. They are living in their natural element. They're finding a way to make it work. It's just such a beautiful place. I feel this connection to them, that they are not unlike me. 
You know, having lived in Alaska and having dealt with the elements and having to find a way to survive, it sounds simple, but Alaska really is a place, even for humans, where we do have certain challenges. And I was just so grateful we were able to take the flight over here that we were actually able to land, but we just thought it couldn't get any better than this, right? With our mission accomplished, we thought we'd head down to another viewing area to see if we could catch a glimpse of some bears there. I saw my friend Charlie helping his customers get back to Homer safely, but it sure looked like he was going through a lot of hard work to get there. Certainly challenging to say the least. As we rounded the corner, right by the viewing area, to our surprise, a sow and her cubs quietly taking a nap on this rock face. Just when we thought it couldn't get any better, here is this bear family just 50 feet away, very aware of our presence, often looking straight at us, and we're absolutely sure that they could smell us. They knew that we were there. The word we most used today was the word, wow. That's all we could use to express ourselves sometimes, just wow. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay around here and watch this forever. Patrick had to get back home all the way to Talkeetna, quite a long flight, so we needed to work our way back down the beach to the airplane and get back to Homer. Yeehaw! Wow! You didn't really have a choice to go downhill, did you? No, it forced me. It's windy too. Cool. One thing you need to know, Chelsea, a pilot will never tell you when he's nervous. Good, I don't <laughs> want to know. That was a little gnarly. That was an interesting takeoff yeah. for sure. Interesting is an understatement. Now the wind and the beach conditions forced us down toward the water just as we were reaching our takeoff speed. It's a good thing that we reached that speed at the time we did because we were going flying anyway. On an emotional high, we made our way back to Homer. It's always nice to go home. It was great to be with my best friend Chelsea, my new friend Patrick. We just had such a wonderful time. There's really no better way to make a new flying friend than to simply go on an adventure together like we did with Patrick. This flight brought many flying lessons learned, helping me become a better aviator through the many different things we experienced. My time with Patrick and Chelsea was certainly one to remember. Like many wonderful flying memories from the past, this one will remain quite special in an otherwise long logbook of experiences that have enriched my life, all thanks to aviation. A huge thanks goes out to Patrick Carter and N Flight Cam for supporting this episode. Also, my good friend Mike Rushforth for the sensational music. Join us on the next adventure. Sign up for email updates at angleofattack.co for exclusive sneak peeks and other extras. Do you dream of being an aviator yourself? Start your journey today at aviatortraining.com. Check us out on social media through Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Got an aviation video project in mind? To collaborate with or hire Angle of Attack, reach out. Thanks for coming along on this adventure, and we hope to see you next time. Until then, throttle on! <laughs>